These are some commonly found queries. Story or narrative of subject visit does not make sense. I know in labs, especially in oncology studies, we see this a lot where the sites are using local labs. And unfortunately, sometimes the local labs are not as consistent with the labs that the with, with the results that they give the sites. And so sometimes they'll forget inadvertently to collect a specific lab, like for example, phosphorus, let's say. Well, not only is that a query, because if the CRA doesn't see it in the source or the EDC, obviously the CRA is going to want some kind of explanation in the source of what happened. First of all, the CRA may not even be aware, where is this lab result? Maybe the site just didn't file it. Maybe the site got this lab result later. So we need a narrative to explain, first of all, the context of what occurred. So that's the CRA's job is to find that out. But in a case like a missing lab result, that is also a deviation. Now, whether it's a major deviation or a minor deviation really would depend on the protocol and it usually would depend on the medical director or the medical monitor for that particular study. Because if phosphorus, if the lack of a phosphorus result for a particular visit directly impacts patient safety, that would be a deviation. If it does not, meaning whether or not that information is available to the PI would not make a difference in the patient safety, then it would be a minor deviation. So uh, a lot of times it's not clear whether a deviation or a query would be minor or major until you get sponsor feedback. Uh, but as a general rule of thumb, if it affects patient safety, it's going to be major. Okay, so the story or narrative of the subject visit needs to make sense. It needs to, you need to be able to have an auditor walk in and not have to question what is occurring at the site at that particular moment in time during the study. The auditor should theoretically be able to read the source documents and understand what's going on. And any discrepancies should be explained in a note to file. The PI needs to show that he or she has oversight of the study. Not the coordinator. The coordinator is not tasked with the responsibility of oversight. That's only for the PI. The PI's role, as per their agreement with the FDA when they signed the 1572 form, is that the conduct of the study at their site is uh, only their responsibility. So you have PI oversight becoming one of the major findings of the FDA when they come to FDA audits. So always look for the assessments by the PIs. Those hold more weight than assessments done by other people, in my opinion. Signed lab results, signed ECGs, initial and dated lab results that are out of normal range, uh, PI progress notes, those kind of things you want to see PI involvement, PI oversight. What they call it in the industry is a PI footprint. You want to show a PI footprint of uh, their involvement in the study.